there's one thing that you might be doing totally wrong when you're fishing a chatterbait. That'd be a huge mistake, and I myself have made it. So I'm gonna share kind of my experience, and I bet you, if you implement some of this stuff, you're gonna catch more fish on a chatterbait, and you're gonna know when and how to fish a chatterbait better. Yeah, how about it? Hit that like and subscribe button. Everybody say hi to Bog. What's up, Bog? Chatter donker, catch more fish. Don't make that mistake. Don't be that guy. Chatterbait or bladed swim jig. It, hot lure, dude. And, and I've been catching them on you. It's such a versatile lure, especially during the pre-spawn when these fish are kind of staging. They're, mo they're moving into the shallower areas. And a chatterbait is a very shallow water bait. It's perfect around grass, around wood, around any kind of cover, even flat, skipping ducks. It's super versatile. But what's different about it compared to like a spinner bait or something along those lines is it's more of like a swim jig style bait where you need, I don't say you have to have a trailer, but really the best presentation includes a trailer. But a lot of times guys are actually using the wrong trailer to get the wrong action out of their chatterbait. And what do I mean by that? Well, the chatterbait, obviously, the way it works is the blade is, pre water presses up against the blade, causing the blade to move back and forth, and the bait creates kind of this erratic back and forth action. I've always compared it to an upside down square bill, but what happens is when you add a chunk of plastic onto the back of that thing, you change and modify the action that you actually get out of your chatterbait. And there's one thing that I've picked up, I'm still down here in Florida, catching a bunch on the chatterbait, and I've been playing around with chatterbait trailers and how they affect the action of the chatterbait and I've found some interesting things out I, I knew a couple things kind of coming in but but I'll lay it out to you I've been catching fish moving this chatterbait super fast dude I'm talking brrr, brrr. we're doing like fast reels slow reels fat or fast reels pause fast reel pause and really darting that thing through the water and it's getting a super erratic action and a lot of that well number one the reason I'm able to fish it that fast is because of my trailer or the, the trailers actually that I'm using. And then number two, it's getting a very erratic, as my Jacob, my buddy Jacob Wall framed it up perfectly, it's getting a very hunting action to it, like where it darts every once in a while, like it's going straight and then it just jeers out or veers out and darts all over the place. And that's kind of when you get your bites, when it sort of gets all disorderly and chaotic. But the trailer really affects the action that, that you get out of that chatterbait. And you're not always gonna want that super crazy action but let me tell you what I'm doing right now so I want to move this thing quick so a lot of guys they kind of they'll put a crawl on they'll put maybe a swim bait on and literally that's their chatterbait trailer I, let me tell you you don't want to do that like you can use all those and I'm gonna tell you different situations to use them but that chatterbait trailer really is going to affect the action so right now in order to get that super fast erratic action I'm putting on something classic, and you could do it with a fluke, no doubt about it, but there's two baits, and, and they share like certain, I guess you'd say attributes or characteristics. So one is, this is a hog farmer spunk shed right here. You can see it's sort of a, a ribbed fluke, but the main feature is it has a straight tail. It's, it's not, it doesn't have any kicker appendages or anything like that. It's a straight streamlined body. The other one is this Gambler Komodo. And you can see on this one too, it's a straight appendage. There's no kicker, no nothing to actually cause drag on the bait. And that's the really key with these guys. They're creating enough ballast on the weight, on the bait because they have a big hunk of plastic. So when, when you go ahead and you thread this on, there's weight on the back of the chatterbait to keep it kind of down, which is extremely important for it to run true most of the time you don't want it to run totally true but you need that plastic on there to sort of create that ballast so it runs halfway straight but what these 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 types of trailers do is they allow you to really burn the bait without it dragging so much because I'm fishing this on a like a, just a seven foot it's a seven foot two where do I got it seven foot two um, KS2 medium heavy that's really what you should be fishing most of these chatter baits on even if you're around heavy cover you can play around with with line and diameter in that regard but you know seven to one reel but really 
when I want to, I'm just fishing it so crazy fast, and I can't have those those kickers or those appendages dragging because it's actually slowing down the bait, and I'm fishing it so fast that those types of plastics, because they're creating drag on the plastic, actually slide down the keeper and, and slip almost every other cast. So it makes me less and less efficient. But what you get out of these two is the ability to fish that thing fast and also a crazy darting action. When I'm like stopping it, that thing's kind of darting off. When I'm reeling it fast, it's going straight and then it's darting off. And that's the action I'm looking for. I'm not saying that it's perfect all the time. There's no doubt about it. And that's what we're gonna kind of get into here. But the trailer is hugely impactful on that action. So let's say we're in a different situation. Let's say we have dirtier water, maybe colder water, and we're trying to kind of slow the bait down a little bit. That's when I look at something like this. This is a little easy, but like any smaller type boot tail swim bait, just like that, um, it, it once again, it gives, it's enough kind of meat, enough plastic to give the bait ballast so it doesn't like weigh, so all the weight isn't in the front. It gives it enough little drag and enough kind of balance. I guess it's almost like a trailer. It balances out the weight so the bait rides even, but it has that boot tail. And what's really cool with that boot tail is it causes the bait to ride up. Actually, that's another feature. When you're using like a straight tail kind of deal, your bait isn't riding up nearly as high. So I'm able to tick that grass better and kind of move the bait up and down in the water column. But with that boot tail, even when you turn it upside down, you don't get as much lift. That's a little trick actually, if you guys don't know. If you turn your boot tails upside down when you put them on a chatterbait, it won't rise nearly as much. It'll still rise, but not nearly as much. But it'll give the bait some lift, which also keeps you from kind of running into the grass or maybe whatever cover or the bottom that, that you're fishing on a flat or something along those lines. But it also slows the bait down. It almost forces you to reel a bit slower so thus the bait's a little more kind of a slow rolled sort of methodical presentation you're displacing a little bit more water with that boot tail because it's kicking as, as the bait's swimming you're also getting a more even sort of linear action and what I mean by that is almost like when a crankbait runs true and it's not hitting the bottom it's a very straight wobble you know you can impart a few little rod put, pops to it or maybe you're hitting the grass or hitting maybe a piece of wood and it darts out but often Oftentimes when you get in those cold or even dirty water situations, it's more about consistent vibration and a, a sort of a, a slow rolled or a, that methodical presentation versus like something super erratic. Like the water that I'm fishing when I was moving it super, super quick is fairly clear. You know, it's tannic, it's Florida, but you can see two foot foot and a half you know it's pretty clear there's a lot of grass and it's no more deep than than two and a half three foot deep but a boot tail is what you look for when you're trying to slow that bait down a little bit and at the same time still displace water but still have that ballast on the bait the other bait that that's a classic um, I don't actually use this one as much uh, it's part of it's because I'm not down here in summer but it's a kicking cross style bait this is um this is a gambler uh burner craw uh, but like a zoom speed craw uh, uh, what is it the rage craw all those kind of like kicker appendages um, type baits what's nice with them is once again you get that kind of that plastic the chunky plastic body which really gives the chatterbait like a nice even kind of run through the water I really think you need that ballast that's a very important key when you start putting little tiny plastics on the back of chatterbaits it starts doing it's almost too erratic like it's too hunty too all over the place but this guy is sort of an in-between it's in between that boot tail and that more straighter maybe like a Komodo or that spunk shad presentation but what it does is it makes the bait ride more evenly in the water column so basically these paddles are sort of flat right so it kind of keeps an even trajectory so we talked about the boot tail kind of rising the bait up when you use like a burner crawl or these kicking style crawls they create some drag not as much as, as a big boot tail but some drag and really they keep you at an even level in the water column but they're also just kind of kicking this guy works a lot better in your I don't want to say summer months but later spring you know when you get those warmer water temperatures when things are stabilized it seems like that that greater amount of kick it is a little bit better now I'm gonna be totally honest a hundred percent totally honest I'm not a huge fan of throwing these on the back of my chatterbait I like them on a swim jig 
but I don't like them on the chatterbait. And, and here's why. A chatterbait has a ton of action built in. Because of that blade going like that, really I look at the trailer as something only to add to that, that sort of bladed, sort of darting, hunting action. I really don't look at the trailer so much as like, like this crazy, like separate action. And that's what these types of like kicker craws, burner craws, uh, you know, zoom craws, all the, the all those craws, rage craws. That's what they do. They have all this kicking action, and I don't really like that because I think it actually takes away from the action of the chatterbait and the darting action. My main go tos, a hundred percent, like not not be not fbs right I, no fbs that's what these talks are i i like a straight tail stuff like uh like a fluke um spunk shad uh the komodo that's actually why i like the komodo a lot is because the komodo provides a little more like hunk of plastic and then you get that that brim or that shad sort of oval esque profile but you still have that that straight tail and it's interesting because that tail because of the ridging the way it goes in and out right there you see it actually swims because the water hits it and it sort of it s waves kind of like a tail fin but that and then like a little easy or a small swim bait i think those add a little bit of action to it but more in a sense that they complement the action the chatterbait already has uh, i i really believe that that like a burner crawl or or these kicker type crawls i think they take away from it that's my personal opinion but also i've, I've fished them you know and it, like they'll ride a little more even over the grass but I, i'm not a huge fan and that's what these videos are about me being honest but definitely think about that stuff i caught an absolute monstrous bass you, you guys want to see it that's a giant dude Dude, that's like a seven, eight pounder. Look at that thing, dude. And it was making that exact adjustment, going to a more straight tail trailer and, and using that trailer to allow me to burn that, that chatterbait as fast as I wanted to move it, it, which I wouldn't be able to do with a boot tail or with a burner craw. But keep that in mind the next time you go out on the water and, and you're thinking about a chatterbait, because that is one of the best pre-spawn lures that, that we're gonna see in the next couple months. But that action, that that plastic or that trailer that you put on it really affects how that chatterbait behaves. So what are you trying to get out of the chatterbait? And use that to help you make a better decision on what to put on the back of it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be uh, back out on the water, hanging out with Bog, doing some more big bass catches, hopefully, or talking to you some more about fishing. Drop any kind of ads that you have, maybe trailer recommendations or anything like that, down in the comments box, and I'll put links to everything at Tackle Warehouse. Tight lines, homies.